Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. And what am I going to be talking about today? Well, first of all, my cat loose for smelling my fingers. Can you stop, boy? Hello, boy. We're going to be talking about the 21 million download campaign. <laughs> I have to redo this video because there was an issue with it that I was recording last night, so I have to redo it again. So that's what we're going to be doing again. So this is technically, I think, like the third or fourth time I've tried to record this. So yeah, 21 million downloads campaign. It should start on the 8th. Let's get into it. First, these are all the basics. I've gone over this basically in the August one, so I'll try and get through this as quickly as I can so we can talk about the actual banner that comes with it. But the login bonus is exactly the same. It's through seven days, 10 silver apples, 10 golden apples, 10 million QP, 10 five-star EXP, 10 silver foe of both attack and HP, then 10 tickets on the seventh day. And then the cumulative update is, again, 200 mana prisms on the first, a golden foe on the second, the opposite one on the third, uh, a rare mana prism on the fourth, and then a lore on the fifth. Uh, limited time campaigns, two times great and super suck chance, along with one half KP, one half, uh, no, one half KP, one half AP campaigns, which is one half AP for all Ember Gathering daily quests and one half AP for a free quest, but the free quests, of course, are only counted if you have not cleared them yet. Once you clear them and done it three times, it will disappear. In terms of the game updates, uh, the thing that is maybe most surprising to me is that they did not include the changes to the ticket, so that will probably be coming in September. It's probably hard-coded that it doesn't work in August, so they're just going to have it probably near the end of... Um, near the beginning. They're going to have it in September, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say in a very weird, roundabout way. Uh, but the, the only change here is that now, instead of 4 EXP on day 3, it's a 5, and the same thing goes for on day 5, it's now 5 EXP of 2 instead of a 4. And yeah, and with one strike, is out of the out of the game now. In the Da Vinci's Workshop, there will be a limited time shop, which will feature the green arts, the green, the quick arts and buster code openers, along with 5 tickets, uh, 5 sets of 10 EXP of 5 star, and for 4 star, with the 5-star costing 45 and the 4-star uh, costing 15 per set. And then 20 uh, silver attack and HP foes. Rare, mana, rare prism shop update. You can exchange 1 rare mana prisms to unlock the ability to get more of Idol Maker. In case you did not get it the first time it came around. The will again, this unlock only unlocks the ability for you to unlock it using mana prisms. <laughs> So you still have to have 5,000 mana prisms, or however, how much if you did not get it fully on the first time around. And then the the Ashtaroth Origin uh, Spirit and Dress for uh, Space Ish Char will be available once you clear, um, I believe it is Singularity? They don't mention it here, but you do have to clear some stuff before it will unlock for you. And it will cost you zero rare prisms, because it will be free. And finally, the summon campaign. We're going to focus in on one of them for right now, and the other one I will save for another tomorrow. Talk about it, because this one is... If you haven't seen this one, this is, this is how this one looks like. It starts on the 8th as well, but it will be different pickup servants, um, as you can see here. That will be focused on another video later today. If I'm correct, this video should be coming up at a really weird time. <laughs> it should be the 6th when I release it, but uh, the other one will be here on the 8th yes yeah, so it'll be closer to the 8th right before it releases anyway this banner which will feature space ishtar and calamity jane along with the rate of craft essences princes of the red bean paste planet rock and cultural of the martial arts simultaneously cultural and martial arts simultaneously along with new craft essences which are not on rate up which is inverted rain of mud which is really good and the full mastership which is full mastership it does apply of ignore invasion and gives crit some crit damage, so that's nice. Um, so let's go. Uh, let's start talking about these units. We'll start with Calamity Jane because she is on this banner. Calamity Jane, she's a archer. She has two quick, two arts, one buster. Three hits on quick, three hits on arts, two hits on buster, four hits on extra. Her first skill is the Goddess Chaperone B, which we do not get the strengthening for a while, so this is the version we're going to have for the vast majority of the time, which is reduces all enemies' attack by 10% for three turns, reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. It's 19% on the critical attack chance, was, uh, lowering and on a cooldown of five. Not very good, but it does eventually turn into this right here. Um... But unfortunately, we're not getting that for a while, so that's <laughs> that's unfortunately not what the unit is on NA for the time being. 
The Galaxy Messenger EX reduces all enemies' MP gauge by 1, increases own attack for 3 turns, 80% chance to increase party's attack, except for self for 3 turns, charges party's MP gauge by 10%, 20% to attack, and 20% to attack except self, and a cooldown of 6. Um, the old Polar Star Shine My Way B increases one ally's buff success rate for, or for 3 turns. When there are 10 crit stars or more, increase their critical damage for 3 turns. When there's 20 crit stars, increase their crit star absorption rate for 3 turns. Uh, give evade when there's 30 crit stars or more. Um, when there are 40 crit stars or more, give them ignore invincibility for 3 turns. And then when there are 50 crit stars or more, charges their MP gauge. The buff success rate is 40% at level 10. The crit damage is 40%. The absorption is 1,500. And the NP up is 20% on a cooldown of 5 all for the low, low price of having 50 crit stars. <laughs> Passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Writing A, Present Concealment A, Independent Action A+. Her third append skill is the Anti-Foreign Attack Damage Aptitude. If you're wondering where did these two come from, um, some stuff happened on the JP side of the game <laughs> related to append skills. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that later. <laughs> I'm not worrying about that for another two years. <laughs> Hopefully metals will be fixed by then. Uh, based off of all the things they're going through on the JP, best of luck to you out there. Her double phantasm is a rank D quick anti-unit, hits five times, ignores evasion for one turn, deals damage to a single enemy. It's 1,200 at level one, and if you get her to level five, it's 2,000. The overcharge effect is reducing their defense for two turns, and then reducing their quick resistance for two turns activates first. The charge is 100%. Uh, at charge level 1, it's 10% defense down, and quick resistance down by 10%. At charge uh, 5, it is 30% and 30%. Mm. With her ascensions being... I don't know if we're going to the ascensions. I don't know why I was about to start doing that. But that is Calamity Jane. How's Calamity Jane? Well, first of all, she's limited. So if you want Calamity Jane, and I don't blame you for wanting her, because she looks like a very... I always like the look of Calamity Jane. Uh, very cute unit, very nice, cow, space cowboy, always a good theme. Um, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to get Calamity Jane when she's limited. Um, the thing is, is I don't think she's a very good unit. I think she's probably a very specific niche type unit. Um, one that excels if you're looking for someone to increase buff success rate. Um, there are some units that could benefit this from this greatly. Space Ishtar, for example, is on here. Has a uh, actually has a, a skill that does not go 100% of the time because um, it's like an 80% chance of succeeding. So if you give her this, it will give make it 100%. So you can see use in there. Uh, but for the most part, at least on NA for now, I don't see much use of using her. This buff being like 80% chance to increase party attack is kind of a bummer. Um, because it's a skill that's tied behind this. But if you give her her, her ability, then that becomes 100%. But then at that point, you're only getting 20% attack up. Maybe it becomes a little bit more sense when... It, it makes a little bit more sense when Goddess Chaperone is here. And this 30% chance to gain 10 crit stars should have an increase of 40%. So it's more like 70% chance to get 10, 10 crit stars. I assume that's how it works. But if it's not, then feel free to tell me about it. But yeah, she just seems like a very, like... Yeah, I don't know when you would ever use her. I have her. I think I have her at MP5 because I went crazy trying to get Space Ishtar. Um, and she has very rarely ever really done much uh, in the many years I've had her. But to be fair, I've also never given her a fair shot in looking for a specific team. So maybe that's more of a failing on me. But she's definitely like the... She is not the main draw of this banner. If you're summoning on this banner, it's because you want Space Ishtar. So really... Um, it's nice that they buff her eventually, and I think they probably need to do a little bit more, but I'm not sure. If you have a little bit more practice with Calamity Jane, feel free to tell me about her. Um, in theory, she has something similar to Bride Nero that I like, where Bride Nero is a very good support unit, and then for some reason she has an extremely powerful NP, so she can be used one of two ways. I feel like Calamity Jane is trying to be that for quick, but she doesn't have it there just yet. Um, she needs a little bit more, either through the MP, for the second skill being buffed, or maybe even the third skill being buffed. I don't know. Feel free to tell me about what you feel about Calamity Jane, but let's go on to the main star of this sh rodeo. Space Star. Uh, my cat just meowed, because he's like, damn, shit's crazy. Space Star. 
This is Space Ishtar. Um, she's a star. Um, <laughs> she's an Ishtar, but in space. Uh, not to be confused with Space Irish, which just released on JP for their anniversary unit. Uh, you're gonna have to wait much longer if you want her on uh, <laughs> on NA a year, in, almost two years. Pretty close, um, the equivalent of it. Anyway, Space Ishtar, she's a Avenger. She has one quick, two arts, uh, two buster. Her first skill with uh, four hits on the quick, two hits on arts, three hits on the buster, five hits on extra. Her first skill is the Devil Sugar A, increases on attack for three turns, increases the party's attack except for self for three turns. It then grants the party charm debuff immunity except for self for three turns, 20%, 30%, and a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the Venus Driver B, increased to MP damage for one time, three turns. Uh, grant self invincibility for one attack, three turns. Um, selects own MP command card type between quick arts or buster for three turns. It's 20% MP damage up for that single turn. Uh, cooldown is five. Her third skill is the multiple starting EX, charges on MP gauge. 80% chance to increase uh, quick arts or buster by 20% for three turns. Each of them obviously has their own proc um, proclamation chance. I did not say that right. The chance of them proccing are all their own. Um, so you can miss on quick, but you can hit arts and buster or have it the other way around. And the MP gain up is 50% at level 10 on a cooldown of 6. Her many, many, many passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Independent Action C, Goddess Essence A++, Adventure EX, Oblivion Correction A, Self Replenishment Magic B. Um, her third append skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, because trust no one, not even your space, uh, your regular self, I was about to say, not the space self. Her Noble Phantasm, which obviously goes through the three different arts. Um, with the only real difference being is slight damage differences, because if you don't know, Arts does one uh, times base damage is times one. For quick, it's times 0 0.8, and then for Buster, it's times 1.5. So that's why there's different uh, values on Arts, Quick, and um, Buster NPs to make up for the differences in how they calculate base damage. At least that's what I assume. Uh, it's rank. Uh, it's called the Eden Shugra Quasar, the Royal Crown Shining in the Primeval Universe, Rank EX, Anti Star. Hits three times, uh, deals damage to all enemies, increases its own damage on extra cards for by 100% for a single turn. MP damage at level 1 is 450%, if you get it to MP5 it's 750%, it increased own MP gauge for three turns. 20% um, up on le charge level 1, if you get it all the way to the final charge level it's 60%, and then it's the same for quick and buster except for like I said attack differences in the damage and stuff like that. And that is Space Ishtar. All right, so Space Ishtar. One of the other reasons that I didn't feel uh, comfortable releasing the video because I feel like I was a little bit too harsh on Space Ishtar, which is dumb because she's a very good unit. Um, up until recently, was probably in contentions for the best AOE um, arts unit in the game. Her and Summer Kama were like neck and neck. There were some specific differences between them in terms of damage versus MP gain and all that. And then uh, Summer Buki came out, and then that completely changed everything. It didn't, so Space Ishtar went from she is the top, top ceiling to suddenly there's a new ceiling. Uh, and there being a new ceiling makes it so that when you look through these skills again, it gives you a little bit of a case of just like, hmm. Because all these skills that she has, first of all, let me just say right now, if you love Space Ishtar and you're looking for an AoE unit who is good in Arts or Buster, uh, and, and can sometimes go for quick. You got Space Ishtar on your side. She's fantastic. She is, if not number one, because she's not number one in terms of uh, arts anymore, she's still a socket, uh, still a socket, still a solid second or third pick for one of them. And then there's obviously some other picks that you can argue about and there's a lot of contention. But the point is, is that she's still one of the best, not just the best. <laughs> so let me put that out there. Um, the thing about her kit is that it seems very, like, it doesn't do much, but then on her on face value, it's all just solid good stuff that doesn't really, like, um, it's just very, I guess, solid is the best way of saying it. It's like, it's like, um, I guess it's kind of like noodle soup. There's nothing, like, inherently wrong about noodle soup. It's just good, unless you hate noodle soup. Then, unfortunately, the noodle soup is terrible for you. But <laughs> let's assume 
<laughs> that everyone loves noodle soup. And therefore, this is just a really good set of noodle soup. It's a simple attack up, and sometimes she gives it to the allies as well, which is by 30%. This second seal of the ability to switch between MPs is crazy, and she can be used with basically all of the support. Um, all the support teams. The only thing is that she's a little bit bad in quick. The reason is that because she only has three hits on quick, it means that she might need a little bit extra help to get to the threshold of 50%. It doesn't have, she doesn't, she basically would need cast story on the team to give her MP gain and stuff like that because she would need it for if she was using quick. But in terms of arts and buster, perfectly solid. All her skills are under six or six or under. Um, it's like one six and two fives. That means that with Koi and Skaya, you will get this back and you'll be able to loop again pretty effectively. Not only that, you'll be able to get the Venus Driver back um, which is nice because this only lasts for a single attack, but it's okay because her NP, this overcharge stacks. So you'll get 20% on the first one, then another 20%, so you'll have 40%. So that means you'll have 60% by the end of it right here just for that, which is really, really, really good. Um, and of course, granting self invincibility would also be good in situations where you actually legitimately need to um, have invincibility. The third skill is multiple starting EX, as I said multiple times. The only thing, this is I think the only misfire in her skill set, and the reason it's a misfire is specifically because now that Summer Ibuki exists and she's no longer considered one of the top units, I think it's fair to look at this skill and say like maybe they went a little bit too harsh on the restrictions on it. Um, because an 80% chance just to get one of these, missing on on any of these is a real bummer and it really sucks. Um, I don't know why she has this. I think she has it because in the beginning they're like, well, we need a way to dial her down in a way that maybe there's a little bit more RNG elements to her. Maybe just in this case, maybe she won't deal the highest amount of arts that she could potentially do and stuff like that. Um, but would it break her if she had this at access all the times? I don't think it would, but um, you can feel free to tell me on that. But other than that, these are all, like, very good. Like, the ability to grant party charm debuff can come in handy. I know for a fact there's a single boss fight that comes to mind, and anyone, too, if they ever did uh, Epic of Remnant, where the boss non-stop charm locked you into the heat death of the universe. So it'd be very nice to have a unit that just gave the party charm debuff immunity for, even if it was three turns, at least, at least gives you three turns to fucking breathe. Um really really solid kit the only thing that is the the only negative to have about it is just that she's not the number one unit anymore but there's nothing like inherent that i would be like because the the thing i was thinking of was is it is it actually other than this third skill here which is either removing the disability or giving one of her other um skills the ability to have a chance up in terms of um Give her something similar to what um, Jane has, which would give her the buff chance up uh, activation increase. Um, does she actually need a buff of some kind? And I think unless you want a buff that specifically makes her the number one... <laughs> she was, It's kind of similar to how when... Um, what's the best way of saying it? Like from, If you remember when Arjuna Alter released... Raiko was the number one berserker in terms of arts... Not arts, uh, Buster and AoE... She was excellent throughout the entirety of when she released. Everyone's saying, like, damn, Raiko's so good. Just have Raiko, just have Raiko, just have Raiko. She was what you would look for when you were thinking of what you would need out of an AoE um, buster unit. And then Arjuna Alter came out, and then everything that you would want from a buster unit changed because she was no longer seen as the thing that you want to strive for. There had been something new that came out that you wanted to strive for, and now it made Raiko look weaker, but it's only because of it's like a new kind of like meta-defining thing, and I think that's probably what Space Ishtar is going through in my mind right now. I'd be interested to see, hear from people who play on JP how you feel about it, because I feel like you guys have had Summer Ibuki now for like two plus years, and you've had other units be introduced into the game. Do you feel that Space Ishtar actually does need something a little bit more? Um... Or do you even want her to be back? Obviously, I think for the most part, most people would want it. Similar to Raiko. Because eventually what they did is that they gave Raiko so many buffs that... Um, which, unfortunately, we do not have all of them yet. Um, but they gave her enough buffs to make her seem... Um, not on par, but she could at least, in some cases, now on JP. There are certain situations where she could out-damage them. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what Space Ishtar needs currently. Is that she needs that. She needs something that puts her apart from... 
summer ibuki something that would make her say because even though she has a lot of just like good in general good stuff what she's missing is something that like strikes her out and is like okay this is the situation where even though you have summer ibuki space is just going to be so much better in these situations a good example of this is that they did this with um um summer murasaki where no, it wasn't Summer Musashi. Summer Musashi. Summer Musashi was suffering from a similar thing where Summer Musashi got very hard power crept, had very high, hard power creep put into her. And the way that they solved it is that they gave her something on her MP that made her just insane when she was specifically fighting against um, saber enemies uh, that are servants. And it's to the point where it's like, well, now if you're fighting a saber um, enemy at any point, you would want to use her because her NP does plus 200% damage when you're going against them, depending on overcharge. And I feel like that's kind of what I would like from Space Ishtar. Um, is that something for her to have something like that? And this is coming from someone who maybe is just saying like, it's really weird because I feel like I'm definitely someone who doesn't like having units be buffed. Um that are already good or were good for a significant time like for example merlin um uh, merlin is the one i always think about but then when it happens to a unit that i really like suddenly my tune changed so i think it's fair to say that maybe i'm just a hypocrite but either way <laughs> i don't think she needs a buff but it would be nice to have her just to give her something that separates her from some of the other ones and i think that would be true for a lot of the other ones for example summer kama has that where summer kama has a um um She's also an Avenger AoE Arts, um, and the thing that she has is a bonus damage against Charm. So, uh, it's right here at the bottom. See? She has a bonus against Charm dudes, and that helps it so it's like, well, if you're never in, in a situation where you can heavily Charm lock the opponent, then maybe this is the way to go. Maybe you'd want to use her in that case. And maybe Spish Ashtar has that in the fact that she has the ability to swap between three different like MP styles, which honestly is insanely good. Like I said here, like if you want to use any of them, in theory, you can just use Space Ishtar for them. And she'll do perfectly fine. She'll do uh, great as long as it's not quick. I think quick is the only one. I would actually, maybe I should try and see a video, see like how is she now in quick and stuff like that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. But either way, Space Ishtar, fantastic unit. I really hope I don't come off as too negative towards her because I think more than anything, she's one of the coolest units in the game. <laughs> I absolutely love Space Ishtar. I love my Space Ishtar. I love the story that they came up with Space Ishtar. I love every single stage of Ascension that she has. I look for a little Spiriton dress, even though it's just like a slightly different change in color. I like this April Fool's thing. I love absolutely everything there is about her. Um, I love Space Air, which is coming out, which is basically Space Ishtar, but in a, in a swimsuit. I would, <laughs> I would summon for Summer Space Ishtar if that was the part two. If everyone else complained, I would be there day one, even though I would recognize that's a double Rin, it's the same person, I don't care. I like her a whole bunch, and I also understand that there's plenty of people who like her and want her for that specific reason. Like, I remember there was at least one person who said, um... Uh, if I had known that Space Ishtar was coming up so soon, I wouldn't... Oh, hello, Chloe. I wouldn't have summoned so hard on Summer, because they want Space Ishtar. And they don't care that Summer Ibuki is better. Um, they care about Space Ishtar, which is fair. Um, and yeah, I think that sums it up. Hopefully, I wasn't too hard on it. <laughs> I really, really hope not. Because, again, like I said, one of the best units currently on NA in terms of just having... The ability to swap between three of the supports, still be an insanely solid arts unit. It's just not, she's not the number one anymore. Um, and to be fair, when, before Summer Ibuki, you can make arguments for uh, her, for Summer Kama, for um, Summer Kiara. There were plenty of good arts units, uh, AoE, who were of extra class that you could kind of say, like, hey, here you go, that this is... There were plenty of uh, cases that could be made. It's just that one came out and was a berserker, and then you use her, and you're like, yep, she's the best. But anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you guys the best of luck if you're going to be summoning for Space Ishtar. I assume that some people will. I think some people are also surprised that this is coming up so soon, because it's like, wait a minute, what about the Face Stay Night thing? I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure they're now saving that because now we know that Face Day Night is coming out on uh, the 8th, I believe. So I think that banner is also coming out. Um, let me see. I don't have it wishlisted, I think. 
But I need I, I can just look up fate and it'll show up. So weird to see this on Steam, by the way. August 7th. So yeah, probably Face State I Remaster will be released on Thursday, August 8th, 2024, GST, so that will be around August 7th for us. So yeah, that will be coming up soon. 14 hours from now. Okay, cool. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Best of luck of you guys summoning, uh, especially because if you're not going for Space Ishtar, there's also other Ishtar <laughs> in Air Chicago, which I will have another video saved for them a little bit later. But anyway, that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till next time, best of luck. Peace out. Bye.